Uh, hello, uh, my name is uh, Geng Song. I'm the coordinator of the uh, translation program. So in this mock lecture, I will um, talk about what is translation, uh, what is difficult about translation, and also answer some of your questions. Uh, so as you know, uh, translation is a popular subject in Hong Kong. So every year we receive many requests from students who would like to major or uh, minor in translation. Um, because in Hong Kong, uh, such a bilingual society as Hong Kong, you know, uh, translation professionals are in high need. So uh, this is a, you know, must sought after subject uh, in Hong Kong U and other universities in Hong Kong. So, um, the question that I would like, I would ask you to uh, think about is, you know, what is translation? So if you if, if we think about the process of translation, and uh, what process is involved when we translate a message between two languages, right? So if I ask you the question, what is translation? And then probably most of you would say. Uh, translation is, uh, you know, the transformation of a message uh, between two languages. And let me take an example. Let, let's think about a situation in a monolingual context. A monolingual means there's only one language, for instance, uh, Cantonese. So if both the speaker and the receiver can speak and understand the same language, for instance, Cantonese, and then they could communicate without an interpreter, without a translator, right? So the speaker says something like, uh, do your homework through a language. So this is the language or the text, which is understandable, which can be understood by the student, right? And he is actually conveying a message. So what's important here is this message through the language, right? Through these words, do your homework, right? Or so for. And then if the message can be received by the student, and then this leads to action, and he will do his homework, right? So this is a, <clears throat> a situation in the monolingual context, that is, both the speaker and the receiver can understand and communicate this the same language. And then this makes sure, this guarantees that this message can be communicated, can be conveyed from the teacher to the student, right? Uh, however, in a bilingual context, which means there are two languages, right? And, and if the speaker and the receiver cannot communicate through one language, and then a translator is needed. So the speaker say something, sorry. <laughs> the speaker says something, which we call it the source language, okay? For instance, English, the source language. And then he is trying to convey this message, do your homework, right? So let's say this is, a, let's call it the message one. And then we need an interpreter who can understand it. Or you could say the interpreter or the translator is also receiver one, right? So he or she first, has to receive the message. That is, the teacher asks the students to do his homework. So this message must be received very well by the receiver one. And then he or she will put that message into the target language, let's say Cantonese, right? the target language, <laughs> and then convey the message to receiver two, that is the student who can only understand Cantonese, right? And then lead to action. 
So in this process, you can see there are two parts or two components in this uh, the process that we call translation, right? So one is decoding and the other is encoding. So this part from the source language to message one, this is decoding. So you have to understand the meaning that the teacher is trying to, to convey, right? You have to understand English very well so that you could fully receive the message. Make sure that the, the message is accurately understood. So this is decoding. And then in the second part, the decoding part, the translator has to convey the message through the target language. So he or she has to think about how this message can be best expressed right, in the target language. So this part we call decoding, right? So this part, this part involves a mastery of the target language, okay? So think about the situation of uh, translation from English to Chinese and from Chinese to English. So if I ask you the question, which one do you think is more difficult, either C2E or E2C? I believe most students whose mother tongue is Chinese would say that C2E is much more difficult than E2C. That is to say, uh, when you translate from English to Chinese, that is much easier than translating from Chinese to English. Why? because the C2E translation involves this part, the encoding. So the encoding is you, you understand the meaning, right? You understand Chinese, you fully understand the meaning, the message, but you don't know how to put that into English because of limited vocabulary, because your English is not good enough. So don't know how to say that in English, right? So that, that is, that's because the encoding part has been affected, right? Um, so a good translation, a quality translation is a translation that guarantees the, that message one and message two are the same, okay? Or closest to each other, right? So you have to make sure that there's no change of the meaning of the message. And that is a good translation, okay? <laughs> All right, so um, what do you find the most difficult in doing a translation? So I ask this question uh, to all my students and they have uh, various um, answers. Um, what is difficult, right? If translation is, is difficult and then uh, why it is difficult or what makes it difficult, right? Um, for me, there are many reasons, but one important or maybe a primary reason uh, for that is uh, in the case of Chinese and English translation or translation between Chinese and English, you can seldom or hardly find two words uh, which are equivalent, right? <coughs> two words, one word in Chinese and the other in English have exactly the same meaning in whatever context. This is very difficult to find. Maybe there's the exception of some modern uh, technological terms like computer, uh, or uh, television, uh, maybe with some exceptions like these, for other words, the Chinese and English words only overlap, their meaning all, only overlap in certain contexts. So when you check a dictionary, you'll find, oh, this one, uh, it's uh, equivalent in English, it's that one, but actually that's very misleading, right? That's very misleading. And uh, you, you, you can never say, you can seldom say that one word equals another in the two languages because Chinese and English grow up, developed in so different and distant um, cultural soil. So 
Uh, we have many uh, examples, like one, so this is a, you know, a very simple English word. And if ask you, you would say uh, the equivalent for one is yi or ya, right? But one is not always translated as yi. Uh, it depends on the context. It depends on uh, its meaning, right, in different sentences. Like only one person came, only one person came, you could say uh, right? So this is one and this is yi. Uh, but one Sunday, if I'm telling a story, if I say uh, one Sunday, I was sitting in the park, uh, reading newspaper, then someone came and talked to, talk with me, talked to me. Um, this one Sunday, uh, we do not translate as uh, right? Uh, instead, we say 某个星期天, or 有个星期天, right? 某个星期天, because this is a one, one of the Sundays, right? <laughs> when you tell a story. So this one is uh, uh, translated as 某, 某个. I don't mind who will become the president. It's, it is all one to me. So how to translate this one? Right? They're all the same. It, it is all one to me. So, so um, during my classes, I used to play a game with my students. I randomly chose one English words like uh, black, right, black. And I asked them to translate it into Chinese. And then the student would say black is he, uh, he. But he, not, it's not always black, right? 如果我说, uh, 天黑了, 天黑了, it's not, so the sky is black, right? It's dark, it's getting dark. So he is dark. Okay, and then uh, dark blue, dark blue is, Shenlan, right? It's not a uh, uh, lan. So dark blue, Shenlan. And then Shen, uh, deep, right? 这个, 这个水很深, it's deep. The water is deep. And deep in thought, deep in thought, is uh, right? Chen is heavy, right? Heavy. Uh, he has been heavily criticized. He has been criti heavily criticized. Not just have uh, So you can go on and on like this. It is an endless chain. So one word always leads to another. You can never find two words uh, with 100% overlapping meaning. So this leads to my second question. That is, will machine translation <laughs> or AI ever replace human translators. Uh, nowadays, with the fast development of AI, you know, uh, artificial intelligence. So uh, is it possible that one day translators are, now, are not needed, right? We can just uh, enter the, 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 the text in the machine and the machine will automatically translate it. For me, uh, the machine can never replace human beings. Maybe the machine can assist us, right? Can provide some assistance uh, in translation, but the machine can never replace a human translator. Why? Because of the reason I just said, right? Because it is for the translator to decide in what context the two words are overlapping. Right to decide in what situation black is translated as he or he is translated as dark. I don't think machine can do that. Right. So this is this is the difficult part of translation. It is also the interesting and challenging part of uh, translation. <clears throat> but I'll show you some interesting uh, examples, funny pictures. So online uh, in the uh, cyberspace, you can find many pictures like this. Uh, foreigners like to took photo, take photos of uh, you know, the funny or Chinglish translations 
in China and put them up on the internet. Um, like this one, you know, Jifang Zhong Di, Anjing Room is a serious place. Um, so this is a word to word translation or a, a, a um, literal translation, okay, uh, which makes it funny. But if I ask you to, to improve it, what would be the, the better, a better translation or correct translation? <laughs> and then uh, probably we could say, uh, because the Ji Fang Zhong Di, I think the meaning here is uh, you cannot enter, right? Uh, this is this is the engine room, and uh, uh, unauthorized personnel cannot enter. I think this is the warning, right? Uh, the warning here. So the simplest way of translating it is just to just say staff only, maybe. Right, staff only, engine room, staff only, uh, which functions the same as well as the Chinese warning, right? Or like this one, Book of Huishou, again, this is a word to word translation, okay? Uh, you can just say no, no recyclable. Hong um, Shouji bake the cell phone is because the machine cannot tell whether this is a hong shou ji or hong shou ji, right? Uh, the machine cannot tell this uh, uh, the units, right? The different units of this uh, sign. Again, this one is bao dao chu, the registration, and then reported everywhere because dao chu, the machine would think dao chu is one word for so dao chu. Um, so these are all translated by Google or other softwares. So Fu Xi Fei Pian is a dish in Sichuanese cuisine and then a couple's lung and it's very terrifying, right? Nobody dare to eat it. Um, this is even more funny, right? Chen Pi is Chen skin. Um, Chen Pi is uh, uh, the dried orange peel, right? Actually dried orange peel. So this is one herbal um, medicine uh, in China. Uh, if you are stolen, call the police at once. Uh, if you are still stolen, uh, <clears throat> uh, you are in charge, difficult to find the police. Right? So <laughs> if it's difficult, and then there's no no way to find the police. Uh, so all these funny pictures, all these mistakes are made by probably either by uh, relying on machine, totally relying on machine or relying on the dictionary, right? Uh, just to check the dictionary and, and, and they think that this, is, uh, this word is the equivalent, is the same with that one. Um, and then they make the, 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 the mistakes, okay? Um, <clears throat> there are other uh, reasons uh, contributing to the difficulty in translation, like a cultural barrier. Uh, we are running out of time, so I'll just very briefly go through this. For instance, in Chinese culture, we have so many kinship terms, right? We have, uh, uh, you know, different terms for father's brother and mother's brother, father's uh, uh, sister and mother's sister, and uh, you uh, cousins on the father's side and cousins and on the mother's side. Uh, why? Because this can be attributed to the Confucian culture of family and the family values, right? Because of the hierarchy, the hierarchical religion in the family, right? So it is important. It is important for Chinese people to differentiate, to tell the difference between uh, relatives on the father's side or on the mother's side, or brothers older than you or younger than you, it's very important to tell the difference. But in English culture, in Western culture, there's no such a need, right? There's no such a need. So it's a much more simplified, like all uh, uh, Google, all this, just the uncle, right? And just the wife, just the nephew, or all these uh, uh, female 
relatives uh, aren't. So it's much simplified, right? And this leads to difficulty in translation. Like he is my brother, he is my brother. And you cannot translate it, right? If you do not, do not know whether this is a younger brother or older brother, uh, you cannot, you, you have to guess, right? And then you have 50% uh, chance of being wrong. Uh, you have to take a side whether this is Tasha Wood, Gogo, or Didi. You can translate it as Tasha Wood, Gogo, or Didi, right? Because Hinde in Chinese culture have different meaning. Normally, a Hinde is a uh, strong brother, it's your friend, right? It's your best friend, it's not the real brother. So, yeah, so a simple sentence like this, he is my brother, sometimes is uh, untranslatable because of the the uh, cultural barrier. So cultural barrier, cultural difference is another uh, reason uh, contributing to the difficulty of translation. Uh, so um, if you are interested, I uh, would welcome you to consider studying translation at Hong Kong U. Uh, we have a prerequisite course uh, that is the introduction to translation. And we have a um, uh, requirement because this is, a, as I said, this is a very sought after subject. Many students would like to major in translation. So we have to be very selective in uh, the meeting students. And also we would like to choose uh, the best students who are well-versed in both Chinese and English uh, so that they could perform well uh, in, in this, um, <coughs> Uh, program. Uh, so the requirement is uh, Hong Kong DSE grade five or above in both Chinese and English or equivalent qualifications. So uh, by equivalent qualifications, I refer to uh, the IB students or uh, mainland students with the, with the Gaokao results. So those students will be considered on the case by case basis. Um, so Basically, only students who meet the minimum uh, minimal language requirement can take this course uh, during their first year study in the Faculty of Arts, this uh, uh, CHIN 1311. And if you obtain a grade C or above in this course, you could declare you could declare major in translation from your second year on. Okay, so. Um, if you are interested, you could uh, check out our handbook online uh, through this link. So you could find all the courses uh, offered by the translation program in the School of Chinese. Uh, these courses include uh, translation workshops, cultural translation, interpreting, which is oral uh, translation, um, business and legal translation, uh, uh, popular culture and media, uh, and, and other uh, areas related to, to translation. And also during the last year, the final year students, we have a capstone uh, course, uh, which is called long translation. I think this is, uh, again, um, <laughs> this is a very useful, uh, experience for our students, uh, because during this uh, capstone experience, the students will uh, translate one project, a do a translation project, either from Chinese to English or from English to Chinese, with a professor assigned to him. Uh, so this is a year-long project, and through the, in this process, the students can gain uh, useful insights and experience of uh, practical translation. So this is, this is also a very, um, uh, very useful ex experience for the students. Uh, okay, so I'll stop here and so thank you very much. Uh, if you have any inquiries, you could just send me an email uh, at uh, uh, gsong at hku.hk. So thank you very much.